Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I'm getting real about how to prepare for sex. Now, I think we can all do with some more tips in the sexual preparation department because it's my belief that most people do not adequately prepare for sex. And I'm not just talking about sex you're having for like the first time ever in your life or even sex that you're just having for the first time with a new partner. I'm talking about sex that you're having with with your long-term partner in your relationship about all the different kinds of sex and all the different ways to have sex. So whether you're young, old, a virgin or super sexually inexperienced, this video is for you. So make sure you keep on watching. Welcome back to my channel. Are you serious with me? Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> I don't understand how these things always happen to me. Sex should absolutely be fun and it shouldn't be something that we place a lot of pressure on and it's my belief that we really do place too much pressure around sex as a society. But that said, sex also is kind of a big deal and I think it's important that we kind of give it the reverence that it deserves. I am not saying that you can't have casual sex because I have had plenty of casual sex. I am a big fan of a one night stand. What I'm saying is, regardless of whether you're having sex with a stranger that's just a one night hookup or you're having sex with your significant other or your spouse, it is something that we should really put a bit of thought and time into because when we have sex with someone else, we are actually taking quite a big risk. We're making ourselves very vulnerable, getting completely naked in front of that person. And there's also the risk of STIs, pregnancy, and of developing feels as well. <laughs> sex is a very intimate and a very vulnerable act. And so that's why I think it really is important that we do actually prepare for it physically and mentally and emotionally. So these tips are gonna really help you out. Like I mentioned in the beginning, they're gonna help you whether you're a virgin, whether you're married, whether you're just going out and having a hookup, these tips are going to help you. So with no further ado, let's get straight into tip number one. Sexual hygiene is unfortunately something that a lot of people don't practice and absolutely should. Now, when I talk about sexual hygiene, I mean actually showering before you think you're going to have sex. Even if you've showered that morning, guys, your genitals collect a lot of sweat through the day, so they're not gonna be as fresh as you think they are when you go to get it on. And particularly if you are expecting your partner to give you oral sex, you really wanna be fresh down there. It's a sign of respect to your partner and it means that your partner is gonna be more comfortable with it and they're gonna enjoy it more. So one of the best ways you can do that obviously is showering before sex, but another way you can really cut down on kind of the sweat and stuff down there is just by keeping your pubic hair trimmed. Now I am personally not a fan of removing your pubic hair. I believe that pubic hair serves a real purpose. It does help to actually keep bacteria and nasties from getting inside our genitals, making their way into our body. And it's kind of something that separates adults from children. That's just my belief. I'm not here to shame anyone who's removed their pubic hair. You do use this if you want to remove yours. But I personally like to trim mine. It keeps it fresh. It cuts back on sweat. And I also like to use some products down there that help it to stay fresh. I actually use Manscaped products. They were originally developed for guys, but they really work great on girls as well. They have something called a ball deodorant and a ball toner, and it basically just keeps your junk from like not sweating all day for dudes. And it does pretty much the same thing for our vulvas as well. And Manscaped is actually today's video sponsor. They are a longtime partner of mine. They have supported my channel so much. They're one of the brands that have made it possible for me to actually just have this channel and make this content so that I can do this full time, which is wild. So I wanna quickly let you know a little bit about it now before we move into hack number two. Today's video is brought to you by manscaped.com, the global leader in men's intimate grooming and hygiene. Manscaped's performance package bundles some of Manscaped's most iconic products together, including the Lawn Mower 3.0, a waterproof trimmer designed for shaving your hair down there, featuring advanced skin safe technology so you never have to worry about 
about nicking your balls again, as well as the all new Weed Whacker, Manscaped's ball toner and ball deodorant, a set of disposable shaving mats and a free luxury travel bag and free pair of anti-chafing boxes. Plus, when you join Manscaped's peak hygiene plan, you'll get fresh blades and refills of your favorite products delivered straight to your doorstep every three months. Replacing the blades is as quick and easy as flicking your wrist. They snap on and off with ease, so staying fresh is a breeze. And better still, my viewers get 20% off plus free shipping. Just hit the link under the video to have your discount applied instantly and treat yourself to trimmed, fresh smelling balls. Your junk and your lady will thank you. This really should go without saying, but unfortunately it doesn't, particularly for women. And that is that if you are planning on having casual sex, you should absolutely be carrying condoms. It is called being a responsible, sexually active adult. Now, unfortunately, our culture has this weird kind of thing where we make it so that if girls carry condoms, that must mean that we're slutty and then we have lots of sex and we're not allowed to carry condoms because if we let guys see that we're carrying condoms, what will they think of us? Will they think we're slutty? Like, will they then want to, you know, even have sex with us or like get to know us better? And I just want to say, ah, uh, it is all total BS. Please don't buy into any of it. The only person that would actually buy into the idea that a girl who carries condoms is a slut is someone who belongs in the 1950s. Most guys are going to be really impressed that you as a woman are taking charge of your sexual health. They're not going to be freaked out by it. And if a guy is actually freaked out by you as a woman carrying condoms, you just got a really good red flag, like a really good warning that you should not waste your precious energy and your precious pussy having sex with him because he's clearly a deeply, deeply insecure man that you just don't even want to be having sex with. But carry condoms, guys. Carry them, girls. Everyone of every Every gender should carry condoms. And this is also the same if you're not having penetrative sex. If you are just going to be having oral sex, you should still be covering up. If you're going to be eating out a pussy, you should be covering that pussy with a dental dam. If you're going to be deep throating a cock, you should be covering that cock with a condom. It can still be sexy, but it needs to be safe. And the thing is, and the thing that we, we don't really sort of learn a lot about in sex ed is you don't just get STIs from having genital to genital contact. You also get STIs from having mouth to genital contact. So just having your tongue and your lips in that area can absolutely end up with you getting an STI. So cover up no matter what kind of sex you're having, stay safe. This is by far my absolute favorite tip and this is something I swear by and I honestly, I can't stop raving about it. I, every time I talk to a woman, I'm like, do you do this? If you don't, you need to start immediately. And that's because lube is so important for women. It's one of the most underrated things. It's basically impossible for a woman to enjoy sex, let alone have an orgasm if she's not adequately lubricated. And here's the thing, sometimes women can get really turned on and we still don't get wet. We don't get, as Cardi B would put it, a wet ass pussy. And we don't get it because all sorts of factors can impact our ability to get wet. Things like whether we're stressed because we have like stuff on at work or there are exams at school at the moment or whether we're, we've recently been sick, whether uh, we are on certain types of medication, even the birth control pill can affect some women's ability to get lubricated antidepressants as well. And the fact is just women aren't human waterfalls. We can't just switch on that lubrication every time as much as we might like to. So I personally always keep lube handy. Not only do I stash a tube of lube by my bedside table, like it is a staple item there. But I actually also carry one of the little sachets that you get for free when you buy a packet of condoms. There's usually like one or two little free little kind of test sachets of lube that you get in the box of condoms. I keep that in my purse so that if I'm going out and I'm gonna end up hooking up with someone and having a one night stand, not only do I have condoms, but I can also whip out some lube and make sure that 
I am going to have a good time too. We really need to normalize lube and we not need to not just normalize women carrying it around, but we need to normalize men having it. I honestly think there is nothing more impressive than going to have sex with a guy and he whips out a bottle of lube and says, here, this is for you to make sure you're comfortable. It shows that you respect your female sexual partner and it shows that you really want her to actually feel comfortable and have a good time. Dry sex hurts. It's not good fun for women and so many women end up having dry sex just because they're very nervous when they're having sex. They might actually feel horny but they're just so nervous they just can't get wet. So break out that lube and let the good times roll. There is kind of this thing in the world of straight sex where basically when two people take their clothes off, it is just assumed that from that point on, sex is happening and there's usually no discussion at all whether there's gonna be oral sex, blow jobs, going down, eating pussy, penetration, putting fingers in different places in the body. None of it is really discussed. And consent is not only sexy, but it's necessary. It's necessary because the things that you did with your last sexual partner Partner that drove your last sexual partner wild, that got them off and gave them multiple orgasms, none of those things might even work on your next sexual partner. Sex is not a one size fits all thing. It is very different from one person to the next. And that's for all genders as well. So it's so important to actually discuss with your partner what it is they want. Don't just assume that your partner wants to be penetrated with a penis because that might not be something they're comfortable with or it might not be something that feels good for them. Don't just assume that your partner wants you to put your finger in their butt or to go down on them or to have you get them to go down on you. Talk about those things before you do them. Now, the the reason people don't talk about this stuff, I get it, is because it's kind of like, it's a bit awkward, right? It's a bit embarrassing to be like, hey, like, how would you feel if I like put my finger in your butt? But you know what is even more awkward? Getting completely naked in front of another person and having sex with them. You are already doing the most awkward, embarrassing, vulnerable thing you can do. Simply saying to someone, hey, is it okay if I put my finger in your butt? That's like the least of your worries. Simply saying to someone, hey, how do you like your dick to be sucked? I don't just want to assume this is the way you like it to be sucked. I want to ask you. I want information. I want feedback. Let me know what you like. Trust me, guys. That is the least confronting part of sex. You've done the most confronting thing by getting naked with another person. Everything else after that is really not going to be as scary as you think it is. But that's the secret to great sex, right? It's getting consent and it's finding out what your partner likes. It's asking for feedback. And the reason this tends to happen so well in the gay community is because nothing is assumed. If two gay men go to have sex, they need to have a discussion as in, are you into anal? Do you like to top? Do you like to bottom? It's never assumed that just because you're a gay dude that you like anal sex. I have lots of gay male friends who actually can't stand the thought of anything going near their anus. So it's definitely a lot more common than people might think and that's why it's so just basically common practice in the gay community that before two guys have sex, they will actually say to each other, hey, what are you into? What are your turn ons? What are your kinks? How do you like to have sex? How do you not like to have sex? Imagine if all of us did that before we had sex, how much more comfortable we could feel during the sex and how much more likely we would be to enjoy the sex and to actually get off. Now, this is a bit of a sneaky one because it's not a pre-sex tip, it is technically a post-sex tip, but I cannot talk about good sexual health and hygiene in a video without mentioning this or I would be failing you guys. And that is, ladies, please go to the bathroom in the first five minutes after you finish having sex. Whether you had penetrative sex, whether your partner just fingered you, whether your partner just went down on you or whether you did all of those things or whatever it is that you did, please make sure you run to the bathroom in the first five minutes after sex. And the reason for that is, is because bacteria can make its way into your urethra, which is the hole that you pee out of, and you can end up with a bladder infection. When we have sex, we have another person's bacteria, whether that's the bacteria on their fingers or their genitals or their mouth, we have that kind of merging around with our own bacteria. And sometimes 
there can be a, a bad piece of bacteria in there that just gets pushed up into our urinary tract and that is how you end up with a really nasty urinary tract infection. Urinary tract infections are those things you get where it feels like you have to pee a hundred times and every time you pee it burns like hell. They are the worst, you definitely do not want to get them so make sure you go to the bathroom straight after sex because when you do that basically it helps to flush everything out so if there's any bacteria that's starting to worm its way up there, peeing is going to just rinse it all out so that you have a much lower, much decreased chance of ending up with a UTI. Don't lay there for like an hour before you get up to go to the bathroom. Make sure you do it in that five minute window because that's when it really counts. But other than that, just enjoy sex. Sex is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be also like a really special, intimate, amazing thing, but it's also just supposed to be fun. Don't take it too seriously. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. It is getting dark now because it is getting to be nighttime here where I am in Sydney, Australia. So I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to go and uh, have something to eat. Not something sexual to eat, though I can see how it could have sounded like that given what I've been just talking about in this video. But anyway, I have terrible dad humor and that's something I need to work on. But that is for... That is for another day. So with that, I am going to head off. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here and you enjoyed this video and you want more sex education videos. Hit the like button if you want more content like this. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks guys. Mwah.